Welcome everybody, hope you're doing well today. Appreciate you joining me for another live stream lesson. These lessons come each and every first Sunday of the month. I wanted to share something today about rhythm. I hope that you are doing well. I have a lot of fun things to share. Thank you for joining me. This is my channel, Ukulele Zen. My name is Stu. And what we're going to do today is we are going to spend roughly an hour exploring rhythms. We're going to play this American folk song and some other things as well. I'm going to share some really good fundamentals of eighth notes, triplets, uh, shuffle feel versus straight feel. And of course, in the future, we can explore more complex rhythmic patterns as well. But keeping this lesson as accessible for everybody as possible, we're going to be focusing on the foundations. Hope you're doing well. Please say hello to the, in the chat. And uh, please take a moment before we get started. Of course, we're going to say hello to everybody, but uh, I wanted to just um, extend uh, my best wishes to everybody in Florida. There are a lot of ukulele groups on the west coast of Florida that I've had the pleasure of visiting and uh, my heart goes out to them. Um, in the midst of Hurricane Ian, there's uh, a lot of disaster relief fundraising going on. So I thought it would be nice if you feel like chipping in. There's a link in the video description below. Of course, there uh, there's so many causes in the world. My heart goes out to all those in the world affected by natural disasters and the other difficulties in life. What we're going to be doing with our music today is listening very closely to our playing and cultivating our rhythm. So like I said, we're going to spend roughly an hour towards the end of this lesson. I'm going to lead a simple mindfulness meditation, something to calm and soothe ourselves. And it really helps to bring more focus and clarity to our music making and to our lives. So thanks so much for joining me and many thanks to everybody who joined me a few weeks ago for my Rockabilly for Ukulele course. It was a lot of fun. Congratulations to all the winners. Thank you for joining in. And if you want to check out that course, there are some links in the description below as well where you can check it out. It is a good, good time. Welcome, Elisa. Thank you so much for being here. These live streams each and every uh, month, the first Sunday of the month, patrons of the channel uh, receive a special live stream where we can interact like this and you can show up with your video and ask me questions. So Sue, glad you're here from Bellingham. Thank you. We've got some folks in Canada. We have some folks from the UK. Rob, glad you're here. Uh, the ukulele butterfly, thank you. I'm glad you're doing well in the midst of everything that's happening right now in Florida. Pete, so glad you're here from Ohio. Good to see you again. Um, and Randall, always glad to have you here. Thank you so much. We got some friends from Thailand in the house. Thank you very much. Um, Rustafarian, love your channel name. That's just so cool. Gavin and Sean are here in Ireland. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. Good morning to everybody. Hello, Marcy. Got to see you here. Um, all right, let's jump in. Uh, this is an American folk song. I'm, you know, I live in America, of course, so this is my home turf. <laughs> Songs like this. I wish my little two-year-old boy was here to sing along. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to use this as a vehicle to practice some strumming. There are, of course, no shortage of other folk traditions in the world, but let's just jump in with this. The first thing we're going to cultivate is uh, reading the chords with a very simple rhythm. And I know for many people um, who have been strumming for a while, this may seem like you're backpedaling, like you're uh, slowing down instead of going forward. The idea is to build a really, really solid, solid foundation of relaxed chord changes and controlled strum with an awareness of the body. You know, we don't overthink it. Quite the opposite. What we're trying to do is to get the brain so relaxed that we don't have to think we just feel it okay so first game we're gonna play is just to as you see uh as you feel the beat you're gonna see a little bouncing ball going across the page all right i did my best to write this really large so you can see it easily 
This is a G. This symbol means to repeat the previous measure. So two bars of G, two bars of D7, two bars of D7, two bars of G, two bars of C, two bars of G, two bars of D7, two bars of G. This is an old um, classic song. It's a good song of unity. And it's definitely one that you can begin to uh, make up your own lyrics for the situation that you're in, apply the folk process to. Let's just start strumming through it, and then we'll get into some exercises for your hands and some other rhythmic goodies for you. Thanks for joining me. Are you ready? The pulse is a one, two, a one, two, three. We, we shall D7. We shall not be moved. We shall, we shall not be moved just like a tree. Planted by the water, we shall not be moved. Sing it with me. Here's the top. We shall, oh, we shall not be moved. We shall, we shall not be moved just like a tree. So much for joining me. My name is Stu. This channel is Ukulele Zen. If you're enjoying this so far, please give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends. Now, what we're doing there as we're jamming is we're developing the ability to see the rhythm and feel the rhythm at the same time. So there's this really interesting cross-pollinization of the senses that happens. Okay. Now, one, one thing that's super helpful, and we talked about it last time I went live, is to use a metronome. And this helps to keep the, the tempo steady, gives us something steady to play off of. Join me right now and strum along with the metronome, okay? I am going to tap the page in time with the metronome. Now, what we have is the beat at 120 beats a minute. I hope you love the metronome. If you do, high vibes to you because the metronome is so key. You got to fall in love with your metronome, all right? It is the key to really getting your rhythm together. There's lots of ways to use it. So when we start clicking at 120 beats a minute, start by tapping your foot to the beat. Now you can tap your foot four times each bar. You could also tap twice each bar, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And tapping just on beats one and three is so much more relaxing sometimes than, you know, tapping on every beat, right? Your leg gets a little tired and the whole thing gets a little bit strained, right? So feel free to lay back and just tap on beats one and three. Come on, let's do this and I'm going to teach you a couple of specific strums that will change this uh, into a different feel, all right? But let's just get solid on feeling the pulse go across the page, seeing the rhythm that you're feeling, and relaxing into it. Okay, are you ready? Here we go. We go one, two, three, 
A one, two, three, four. We shall change. We shall not be moved. Stay here. We shall. We shall not be moved. Just like a tree. A planet by the water. We shall not be moved. All right. Very nice. So that is just the first exercise to apply to any song. It's to, you know, just lock in with the tempo. This is fundamental for everything else that we want to do with rhythm is to feel that steadiness of pulse. So what we're really working with is to become stable and steady with the pulse, all right? Very often, our excitement sometimes makes us rush ahead. Sometimes we rush ahead because we're not listening to the pulse as much as we're listening to all the other things we have to pay attention to. And there's quite a lot of them, right? There's knowing where to put your fingers. Uh, there's knowing what's the next chord that's coming. Uh, so it takes some training, all right? Patient training really helps. Uh, so we're developing stable, steady groove, okay? Just that foundational exercise. So, so key. I wanted to now um, put a few other chords in this just to create a little more variety with the chord progression. And what we'll do is we'll add an E minor chord right here, okay? So when you get to these two measures, you'll switch from E, G to E minor. All right, that's one variation you can add to this, all right, just to create a little more variety with the harmony. Now, let's strum through it, and what we're going to do is bring some attention to our accents, okay? We're going to layer some more elements on this as we move through this lesson. Um, you can feel this accent pattern. You've heard me talk about this before. It seems simple. It's tricky though, you know, to, uh, to not always play everything loudly. Check it out. Take your strumming finger, touch your thumb to it, and let's just spend three minutes working this out. You could spend three more minutes on your own anytime. It's a nice thing to do while you're waiting for your toast to pop, just have your ukulele, and just do this very simple exercise. The exercise is to play very, very lightly and then wind up the wrist and just whip the fingers across the strings. I'd like you to try to, um, as you get comfortable with this, to try to bring a, a sense of touch. You know, try to feel what your hand is doing. It's not so much thinking about it, it's really feeling it. So very lightly, light, then wind up and whip the strings. Light. Whip the strings. Light. Whip the strings. Music study is a lot like a spiral. You keep coming around to the same lessons and going deeper and deeper and deeper into them. Let's exercise this with a steady tempo, okay? I'll get it started. You jump in with me. I'm going like this. Light, strong, light, strong. Keep it gentle. And then just whip it. That whip. It's not so much that it's harder, it's just faster. Yeah. Can you feel it? Can you feel the back of your fingernail getting tickled by the strings? Yes. And one more time to get ready to stop. Excellent, everybody. If you haven't clicked away, you have a great attention span. I appreciate you hanging. You know, music, it takes time to learn it, you know? Now, if we do that, if we tap in one, two, three, let's tap in a really slow tempo so we can have another awesome exercise, which is going to be to double the speed. So let's do this. And although this seems simple, it's like we're going to the gym 
We're working out a muscle, patiently cultivating it. So here is 63 beats a minute, nice and slow. Let me get it started. You lock in with me. Weak, strong, a oh, weak, strong, ready. Thank you for joining in, everybody. Here we go. A oh, weak, strong, a oh, weak, strong. Greg Starr, thank you, buddy. Yvette Rodriguez, glad you're here. Ukulele Bird, I'm glad you're here. Fret Frontier, so good to see ya. Come on. Terry, Brad, Racy. Hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Thank you for being here. One. All right. Can you feel time getting segmented into regular units? A one. See if you can now put the strum on autopilot and just make up some stuff with your voice. Just beatbox, scat. There's no wrong way to do this, but you are trying to keep this pattern the same. Weak, strong, light, strong. Boom, da, don da, 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 don da. Try it. Now try saying this with me, ready? Come on, Ready? Make up your own. Come on, go for it. A boom ba chick start to ka a bla boom bong chick come boom don't da chick the don't go for it yeah boom boom chick on boom boom chick on the boom boom don't got then the boom boom got zinc a boom don't got keep it simple enough that you can really stay steady mm What would you do if I sang out a tune? Would you click away and watch another video? I don't know, maybe you would. Lend me your ears and we'll learn about rhythm. I appreciate you joining with me. All right, are you ready? Take a break. Stop. Excellent. <laughs> Isn't that a cool exercise? You get so stable with this. And then you're able to just flow with your voice, all right? Eventually, your hand can do what your voice does. Now, check it out. Watch me. I'm going to go at this speed, then I'll go double time. Slow, then I double it. Ready? Try it with me. Fast. Slow. Yeah. Just keep on trying. One, two, a three, a four, a one, two, a three, four, a one, two. Come on now. One, two, three, four, a one, two, three, four. This is the rhythm gym. Try saying it. Two, three, four, a one, two, three, four. Four, one, two, three. Count in your own home language, of course, you know. I can't count to four in German. I can't count to four in Thai. But just try it. Ready? A one, two, three, four, a one, two. Keep it loose with your wrist. Two, a three, a four, a one, two, a three, four. And let's take a break. Hey, folks. Take a break right now and just stretch your hands and shrug your shoulders. That was a good workout. Yeah, let me know how you're doing in the chat down below. So glad you're here. Thank you, Roland. Appreciate you being here, Nikki. Oh, cool. Lithuania's in the house. Glad you're here. Thank you so much for joining me. More cowbell. Yeah, that's what I love about this metronome. It sounds like the cowbell. <laughs> so um, I forgot to breathe. Well, you know, you must have been breathing, right? You're still here, Yvette. But I know what you mean. To just remain 
aware of the breath every once in a while just it really helps now friends what we just did was double time all right we were playing slow quarter notes at 63 and then when we were going faster we were playing two bars at double the speed so that would be you know, 126 now let's and that rhythm is uh, the tricky thing is to keep that light strong pattern together those of you who are interested in swing music This is the rhythm. Anyway, that's the thing that it's based on, is seems so simple. But man, is it tricky. My years of playing Django Reinhardt music uh, on guitar taught me how keeping a steady quarter note, weak, strong, weak, strong, is really a deep deep training. If you're willing to do this for just a few minutes a day, you're going to learn how to play blues better, jazz better, soul and funk and reggae and virtually all popular music has that accent on beats two and four. Not all, of course, but a lot of the world's music that we love, a lot of pop music has that. So you're unlocking a master key. You know, you're, you're, you're using a master key to unlock a, a door that it just opens up so much rhythm, but we have to be willing to train, you know, and if you're still one of the 110 people here, I think there's more on Facebook that if you're still hanging and you haven't clicked away in a world of 15 second and 30 second videos and stuff, you're training yourself um, to stay with the difficult stuff, right? So I appreciate your willingness to do that. Really, I do. I so appreciate it. I don't teach in quick bits. I like to go deep so you can learn. Okay, I've been blabbing for a while to give some clarity and also to give our arms a rest. Let's, do you want to do this again? What we're going to do now is you're going to strum with me on this tune. And you can strum any strum you want. But because we've really spent some time nailing that backbeat, two, four, two, four, one, two, three, four, your groove is going to have so much more liveliness. It's going to have so much dynamic to it, all right? And then the game, of course, is to, if you hear that you're back to playing everything hard or something gets tight, just stop, smile, and get back on, all right? At first... I would really recommend you to stop and let go and then start again. Because what you're doing when you stop is you, you interrupt the habit. You interrupt the habit of everything being loud, you know, okay? So if we want to train, we have to just stop. And that's, that's really where the magic happens. But make sure you stop with, you know, this attitude, okay? Wow, what's happening? And then get back on the train. All right, let's do it, friends. We're gonna um, we're gonna pump this up to 126 beats, which would be the double time feel that we were just playing. Strum anything you like. You'll hear me put some extra fills, and we'll take some questions after this. Okay, I really want to make sure I answer your questions. Hey, if you're digging this, please subscribe to the channel. I appreciate you being here. Give this video a, a like. And check the links down below to donate to the American Red Cross if you're interested in supporting some relief efforts for Hurricane uh, Ian. And also there's some other links down below that um, I think you'll be interested in. So thank you very much. Let's jam. Steady. Stable. Are you ready? A one, two, a one, two. Let's do it. We shall.
be moved when we help each other. When we help each other, we shall not be moved. We need help each other. We shall not be moved just like the tree. everybody come on give it up nice <sighs> I wish you were in the same room with me but I can feel you Jerry that's a you know I once saw a bumper sticker friends don't let friends clap on one and three har 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 I hear you but you know honestly I don't like making fun of anybody's efforts if you're showing up you're awesome okay seriously just keep showing up all right uh, yeah, one and three is bluegrass with um, high speed, uh, you know, very fast uh, Roma music. Uh, there's plenty of uh, plenty of examples where clapping on one and three is the hip thing to do. You know, for this, it's two and four. All right, we got some questions. Let's. Um, yeah, Yvette, glad you dig it. Uh, you know, so many verses you can lead this in a lot of ways, and you know. Now that we've hung with the rhythm, you could play this reggae. You know, that you could do it like a funk song. But the common thread is that backbeat of two and four, which we patiently trained. Get into the feeling. Light, whip, light, whip. All right. I hope you uh, enjoy that practice. And I've said this a lot, but I literally do this when I'm waiting for my tea water to boil. I have like a cheapo plastic ukulele in the kitchen or a guitar. And I just do very simple things for a few minutes with all my attention. And then I've gotten in three minutes of really deep practice. It, it, you might like to try it out. This way your music making becomes part of your, your lifestyle. You know what I mean? I know you know what I mean. Thanks for being here. All right. We got some questions. Connecticut. Uh, WW Potter 974. Did you ever move the E string to the fourth position and tune it to low G? Um, e string to the fourth position and tune it to low G. I'm not sure what you mean, but... I do enjoy, uh, I do enjoy uh, alternate tunings, and I've made a few videos about them at my channel page. You can look up um, O Tannenbaum. There's a couple of Christmas carols, and I am working on a book about open tunings. Um, the ending. Trey Romano wants to know about the ending. I've taught this ending a couple of times. It's such a stock ending. Um, for it's a Django Reinhardt style, and I teach this in the Django Reinhardt course that I have at my website. That's the melody, you know. So we're in the key of G. We're gonna start here at the fifth fret. Play with me, please. Fifth fret. Now the first finger at the fourth fret. And then you just go up one fret at a time. Did you notice how fast I did it? 
I want you to follow along, of course. I don't know. You could, maybe you started to play yesterday. I want to make sure you're having a relaxed experience. But when you go slow, you also get a chance to feel your body more, right? And look at it and feel it. And then it really, uh, it, the information is encoded. It's embedded in your neural net in a deeper way. And then once you're comfortable with it, try it a little faster. I did some fancier pants stuff. I went playing the 6-9 chord. Not an easy chord for, for, for beginners, but it's the top two strings. It's a double bar, all right? So I'm just barring the bottom. You hear this in bossa nova lot. And then I went to a G major 7 chord at the bottom. All right. Um, instead of purchasing a low G string, I heard that you can move the E string to the G position and then tune it up to... Uh, Gee, I've never tried that. Um, yeah, I hear what you're saying. You know, I've never heard of that, but I have heard people use um, guitar strings. Uh, did you know these are not ukulele strings on this on this uke? Most of my ukuleles, yes, I use uh, ukulele strings, but this these are guitar strings. These are jazz guitar strings, flat wound guitar strings, and these are classical guitar strings. So. Yeah, there's lots of ways you can you can use a G string from a classical guitar and plop it on your fourth string. So friends, I wanted to share some more rhythm. How you doing? Shall we continue? Yeah. How about we uh, take a really cool jazz chord progression? I'd like to teach you something a bit more complex. It's not impossible though. And um, this is a a stock jazz intro. I teach tons of intros and outros. I love them because, you know, when you, when you have a couple of intros in your back pocket that you just know by heart, you can just always plop them into any tune. And um, even if they don't match the style of the song, they can make a nice contrast. There's all kinds of cool things you can do. So give me a sec just to write out some chord diagrams here. And we're going to go through a couple of nice chord diagrams and then yes we'll we'll get rhythmic with it all right the first chord i know you know this c okay strum your c chord come on excellent but strum it with your pinky ready uh, fret it with your pinky you can strum it with your pinky if you want next chord The C diminished seventh chord. Sometimes that's written like this, dim seven, all right? C diminished seventh. And what we have here is the first finger and the second finger, just like a D7 chord. We just played this chord, right? So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna drop your ring finger here at the third fret of the third string and drop your pinky right here. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. You got it. Now, you wanna really master this chord, check it out. Take the hand off, float it up in slow motion. Slow motion, like you're the lunar module coming to land uh, at the Sea of Tranquility. And see if you can bring the hand into that position and then land. This is a deep training. So what this is, is um, something I like to share with folks who maybe like yourself really wanna learn uh, in a deeper way and streamline the learning process. Make it faster. Um, I've, I keep saying this, but the fast, the slower you go, the faster you get there. You know, when you are approaching this chord, if you try to do this quick and then, and then you're trying to find it, you know, um, what happens is you're reinforcing kind of a traffic jam of information. So if we go slow enough that our brain and our body can understand what you're trying to command and you take it in with the senses, then you're programming ease 
into your music making, into your practice. And for these moments, while you're really focusing, just a reminder, it's the D7 chord shape and then the ring and the pinky. And when they land all at the same time, you're also training the way you're going to want to show up when you play. You know, you're going to want all the fingers to land, usually all at the same time. So take it in with your senses. And when you practice this way, there's another benefit. And that is your projects and your plans and the concerns and the bills and the stresses of life, which are a natural part of life, of course, they're just, they go away for a few minutes. You're so present with what you're doing and you're stacking successful gestures, right, on top of one another. Now you, as you land this time, let's strum it. Isn't that a nice sound? So here we go, C and then drop that shape. There you go, nice. Do it again, C. And drop that, yeah, yeah. So you feel, you feel what I'm talking about, right? Ukulele Zen, it's not just a, um, it's not just a cute name I chose. I would love for your experience to be as peaceful and relaxing as it can be. So your music making really becomes part of a, of a healthy lifestyle, right? Another way to think about this is that you have the pinky down here, right? Finger number four. And then this looks like a G major chord, right? It looks like the shape of a G major, right? It's just that shape, but right there. Okay, so right like that. Yeah. Very nice. So you're not wasting time when you practice this way. You're actually saving time. So let's play this together, these two chords with a little rhythm. A one, two, a one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Stop. Ready? Here we go. Come on. A one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. Two, come on, a one, two, three. Playful practice on that chord. I'll of course happily share the other stuff I played, but let's learn the other two chords. D minor seven. Okay, it's a D minor chord. Looks like an F with the ring finger added. And then you just that pinky is still there. That pinky just won't give up, right? It's still there. Not squeezing hard, but just resting. And there you go, you got your two, three, one, four finger. So you go from this, and same game as before. You know, you can make your practice into something so pleasurable. Just your ballet of your fingers. Awesome, next, last chord, we go to G, seven. All right, so when we put this together, we get a stock intro, and you've probably come across this, maybe you've come across this before, but now, what we're doing is we're putting a lot of care into our, into our practice. Let's strum them in a gentle way, okay? With a thumb. Nice, juicy, uh, <laughs> rich sound. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Diminished. Minor seven. Let's go through it again. C. Diminished. So I have a whole course about intros and outros at my website, stufuchs.com. Check it out when you get to this chord now. Plop this on. Slide it up three frets. One, two, Three. Yeah. And now we 
play the next chord, D minor seven like this, bar at the fifth fret. And you could go right back to your good old G7, or you could play this shape, which is a F7 shape, but it's up here. All right, I'll draw this all out on the board, okay? So what we've done here now is we've added some extra sauce, okay? We've changed progression, we've changed positions. That's the fifth fret, D minor seven, and then your G seven shape is here. Now, of course, the course that I referenced before, if you're interested, has very beautiful diagrams, <laughs> neater than this, right? But this is another way to play your G7, and that's at the third fret, okay? So we don't wanna do too much. We wanna instead really learn things thoroughly. So check it out. Let's just, how about you watch me do this once? silly but you want to practice this with me cool C C diminished then we'll go to D minor 7 then G7 second time around C we'll go C diminished seventh and then slide it up three frets then we'll go to the fifth fret bar straight across and then to your G7 like this We'll do it nice and gentle like we're playing a Hawaiian ballad or something really mellow. Let's play a nice, easy going strum so we can focus on our fretting. One, two, three, four. D minute. Do, uh, minor seven. introduction in the key of C. Now, one more thing about rhythm, and then we're going to, I want to, of course, take some questions and see how you're all doing. Yeah, chord magic. So fun. Um, appreciate you saying so. Thank you, Eric. Appreciate everybody. Uh, David has a question. I noticed on Pinky C, my wrist is bent opposite than usual. I was probably because I'm holding the holding the ukulele a little higher to show you up close. Um, this particular program I'm using doesn't let me zoom in. Um, you mean I was doing a bit like that? Yeah, probably like that because I was holding it up. Yeah. So you just pretend you have just like a little orange in your hand, keeping it loose. Yeah. Um, yes, you can, Todd. You can still get the ukulele course it's at a link down below it has jam tracks tons of great content and it's going to be expanded in the coming you know, year i'm going to always be adding more tunes and things to it so check it out it's at the link down below thanks for asking all right it's the g chord shape add pinky that's a good way of thinking about it linda yep you just take the g hop it up a couple of frets and then plop this down same for high g tuning as well 
Of course, on baritone, it's um, not C diminished. It would be G diminished on baritone ukulele. If I ever become an octopus, I'll be able to demonstrate on baritone and um, standard tuning at the same time. So my apologies to those playing baritone. Just use these shapes and you'll have to transpose the names. Um, all right, any questions before we get into one last rhythm thing? It's a really cool rhythm thing. I mean, it's you could spend a whole lesson on it. And if you're still hanging, if you're still watching 45 minutes later, thank you. Um, not just because you're hanging with me, but thank you for being so enthusiastic about music that you'd want to put in the time, you know? Um, there really are no shortcuts to any place worth going. That's what my teachers told me. And that's not a bad thing. If we're enjoying the long ride, then let it be long, you know? When I practice, I really bliss out. I have a good time learning this stuff. I could play more complex stuff. I don't want to right now. I want to show you how playing very simple mu simple things can be immensely pleasurable and also really build the skills. Yeah, we could... There's all kinds of different chord voicings and stuff. But what we're really focusing on here is rhythm anyway. All right, so check it out. Shall we... Oh, thank you, Eric. That's very kind. I appreciate you uh, donating. Appreciate it. There are some uh, links in the description down below. Uh, wait, Haiti, is it your birthday? Oh, well, come on, folks. We got to join in. All right. This is a tangential lesson, but what the hey. Uh, let's play happy birthday. C, G, and then we'll go to F. Okay, you'll, you'll hear it. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Haiti. Happy birthday to you. To you. Have a great birthday. Happy birthday. Thanks for spending a little bit of it with me. Hope you're having a great day. Congratulations on another trip around the sun. We're about five minutes away from a, a brief mindfulness meditation. Thank you so much, everybody who's uh, uh, donating. Sweet. Uh, thank you. You're so generous. Thank you, Vincent. Thank you, Trey. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, John. Appreciate you being here. Andre says, I don't have any questions because I explain everything. Oh, you're too kind. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, all right, friends. Rhythm is king. You want, to, you want me to demonstrate it? Check it out. There's an old story of a, a kid comes home from their first violin lesson. Two kids come home, two different homes. The first one plays uh, the song uh, that they learn, and they play this. And the mom, of course, says, that's wonderful, Johnny. You're doing great. You're doing great. Can't wait to hear what you learn next. All the right notes, but not the rhythm, right? The next kid comes home and he plays this. <laughs> and, of course, the mom says, Wow, that was some interesting sounds. It sounded like Beethoven to me. You get my point, right? Wrong notes played with, with good rhythm make for good music. So let's talk a bit about rhythm in terms of a triplet. I'm going to erase this for a minute. You have a... Let's let's just start with the quarter note, okay? All right? The quarter note can be divided into eighth notes. All right? Like that. Now that eighth note, the first one could be divided right in half, okay? So it's one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And the other 
Um, the other way to play it is where that eighth note sounds like a triplet, but the first two sounds are tied together. So it sounds like this. Triplet. And that's the difference between, in a, I mean, that was a very quick explanation, but between straight and shuffle rhythm. Let's have an experience of it, okay? Let's play a two chord song we all know, Bob Marley's Three Little Birds. All we'll need is our C chord and our F chord, all right? Let's first play it with um, shuffle, okay? That'll be. It goes like this. Don't worry about a thing. Cause every little thing gonna be alright. Three and four and triple and triple and triple. Don't worry. Paper, it would be written like this, but it sounds like the triplet. All right, a simple concept, but one that is not necessarily easy to latch onto. We have to really get it into our ear and into our body. Now, go and listen to Three Little Birds by Bob Marley. Go and listen to it later, and you'll notice that. Almost all ukulele players play it with this triplet feel, but the actual tune is straight eighth notes. Okay, it's it's more. are two very different rhythmic feels going on here. One is the straight eighth note, one is the eighth note that's the shuffle. Okay, straight or even, sometimes called classical eighth notes, and then there's shuffle. Happy Oktoberfest, Andre. <laughs> I once flew into Munich the last day it was the last two days of Oktoberfest. I was playing a concert with a band, and um, I was greeted at the hotel. Of a, you know, I was greeted with a very fine German beer, so it was nice. Happy Oktoberfest to you and all your fellow countrymen and women. So, friends, we're just about out of time. Did you have a good time? How about we practice a little bit more of the difference between straight eighth and shuffle. In the future, I of course want to teach you more complex patterns, but what we're what we're really working with today is um, just getting really solid on our foundations. How about we take out our old friend the metronome? Don't worry, two, three, four. Okay, 108 beats a minute, and let's practice changing our feel. There's the quarter note. You gotta say it in order to play it. So count with me. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Still doing that same game of very light and then whipping it. Hey. Don't worry about a thing. Oh, every little thing is gonna be alright. Worry, don't worry about a thing. Every little thing gonna be alright
that's just one way to play it. But I very quickly just changed my feel to one where I'm muting the sounds. See how floppy my wrist is? Here's a party trick. The marionette. Can you do this? It puts you in touch with what a loose wrist is. It's like a puppet. You have a pin. It's like you have a pin through your wrist. Very loose. All right. So that is the straight feel. Of course, if you were going to play a rock and roll tune, you know. Same idea. Or, you know, Mozart, you know. not Mozart but the idea is just improvising in a little bit of a classical way next let's play the shuffle Chip-a-lip. now every beat is being divided into a triplet feel chip chip a lit chip a lit chip a lit chip a lit try this with me two fingers on the palm and just say da 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 thank you barbara da 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 thank you joseph da 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 red strum it Two, three, don't worry about a thing. Cause every little thing gonna be alright. Don't worry about a thing. Cause every little Feel the difference? All right, let's just stay on one chord now. Triplet, ready? One, two, shuffle, go. Ready? Straight. Shuffle. So, friends, that's one of many ways to practice that. It takes some training. The essential training, and then we'll end with this, is to, you know, you you have the steady pulse from your metronome. The, The essential training is to get clear with your voice and your body. If you can articulate it with your voice and your body, the strumming will happen so much easier. So I begin by first counting. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and I go ba 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 one and two and three and four and four and two and three and four and ba and two and three and four and one and two and then you change ba 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 and try to do it with your instrument. Change fields. the coordination of the body is all dependent on how we're hearing it 
and how we're feeling it. And in order to do that, it just takes some patient training. So thank you for hanging. We're at an hour. The triplet strum. Tri pa let 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 starts to turn into a circular motion. Lots of ways to play the triplet. We'll get into that in another time. I wanted to end just with a, a brief meditation, something to soothe ourselves, uh, to create with our breathing and our attention some stability and some clarity. I appreciate you being here. We began the lesson with that fundamental exercise. Try this for three to five minutes a day. You'll be blown away with the sensitivity and the state stability you develop. Light. It becomes a meditation. A meditation is just what we are allowing our uh, attention to rest upon and then remaining on it. Okay? Not by force, but more out of curiosity. You already know how to meditate, you know? If you've ever pulled the car over to stop and look at a sunset, and just for, even if it was just for a minute, you just looked and nothing else, right? Your attention was totally focused on that beautiful object of the sunset. You didn't have to try to focus. Your curiosity, what you find absolutely fascinating and beautiful, it's quite easy. So this is a natural state that we're returning to. And what we're doing is we're just training ourselves with some breathing. So. I appreciate you being here. Just stick around for a few more minutes. We'll end with a, a simple meditation that you can use anytime during the day. Thanks again. Please check out the links down below. Tree Picks is in the house. Thank you. Adam from Tree Picks. Go check out treepicks.com. Okay. <laughs> I'm supposed to be meditating, dude. Let's come together. Thank you. Just for these few minutes, wherever you are, bring yourself to a place of stillness. Allow yourself to settle with your feet on the floor. Sit upright, but not rigidly. You like to tuck your chin just a little bit so the back of your neck elongates. And to feel that your vertebrae are stacked one on top of one another. And they just keep each other in balance. Let's just listen to the sound of this bell. Allow yourself to become still. And bring your awareness to your in-breath and your out-breath. All we are doing is recognizing our in-breath and recognizing our out-breath. We don't have to change our breath in any way. If your in-breath is short, let it be short. If your in-breath is long, let it be long. following your in-breath and your out-breath, allowing your attention to rest on the pillow of your breath, following your in-breath and your out-breath. Breathing in, this is my in-breath. Breathing out, this is my out-breath. And 
now let's follow our in-breath all the way from beginning to the end, following our out-breath all the way from beginning to the end. Zen master Thich Nhat Hanh often would hold up a stick and say, if this is your breath, you're following it all the way all the way out. So we're training in concentration, allowing it to be a relaxed concentration. Enjoy your breathing. This is meant to be an enjoyable practice. Let's enjoy our in-breath and out-breath. Following the in-breath all the way in, following the out-breath all the way out. Breathe in such a way that you can allow the muscles on your face to relax. And offer yourself a smile. You're not smiling for anyone else a smile to yourself. Breathing in, this is my in-breath. Breathing out, this is my out-breath. Breathing in, there is life within me. Breathing out, there is life all around me. Thank you for training, practicing with me. Your instrument is also a wonderful object of your concentration. to spend a moment and play a short musical haiku as I just did, treating each note like it's your bell, with awareness of your breath, awareness of your deep listening to what's happening right in your lap. Thank you very much for joining me for this lesson, the first Sunday of each month. These lessons happen. There are links in the description below if you'd like to join as a member of the Patreon community. The second Sunday of the month, there's a special live stream where I take your questions and really answer in depth your burning questions about music, about technique, about anything. And uh, you get to join as a video guest as well. Check the links down below too to make a donation to the Red Cross to help with relief efforts for Hurricane Ian. There's also a link down there to my latest online course all about Rockabilly for Youth, which teaches you a lot about how to practice, how to be a, a more stable musician, as well as how to rock out on your ukulele with lots of fun tunes. So thanks so much. Appreciate y'all being here. All blessings to you and your family. Wishing you a good, peaceful day. And uh, we'll see each other soon in a video. I really appreciate you watching. Happy playing. Take good care.
Thank you.